Um, I guess the story of my project started probably about four years ago. Um, I went to a teaching workshop at NC State when I was a master's student, and um, they had a guest presenter, Tom Romano, and he presented on multi-genre research projects. And he seemed kind of like a kooky guy, but he was very um, inspirational. The student projects that he shared were just really interesting. Um, and very different, very non-traditional, and um, but he shared a lot of like middle school and elementary school student projects, which um, was a fear I had early on about trying to implement this at the college level, that it would be seen as kind of children's work, that um, students are just doing drawings or, um, you know, creating charts and that there's not any value in that. So, um, so anyway, that was kind of my first um, inspiration for working with uh, multi-genre research, which is what I'm going to be doing for the showcase. And um, so I started reading more about it, and um, I got Tom Romano's book, one of them, um, and kind of looked through that and began to think about ways that I could translate this to the undergraduate college level while still uh, maintaining high standards for research, um, incorporating academic writing as well as more personal writing and public writing. So mulling all of that over, um, the last semester of my master's program I took a post-human rhetorics class and um, I connected multi-genre research with um, cyborg theory um, with Donna Haraway. So that was resulted in a paper uh, where I did a lot of research about multi-genre and read a lot of articles that are some were very theoretical and some were really teacher-based, like here's how I do this assignment in my class and here's the benefits of it. Um, and then I got the chance to try it out when I began teaching at Elon. Um, the first time I did it was really scary and my students thought I was crazy and I was able to, I had to kind of find my own resources because there's not much out there. Um, so when I told them that they're going to do this really funky research project, um, they really kind of, they went with me, which was good. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, um, they overwhelmingly really enjoyed the project and got a lot out of it. And I had a lot of reflections that I collected with them talking about, you know, how this made them think about writing differently, how it, how they learned the research differently, because they had to work with the material in different ways. So. Um, since then, I've been teaching it every semester, except for the current semester. <laughs> we have taught multi-genre research for six semesters and for sheer comp, among several sections in each semester, and um, presented on it at some small conferences, like teaching conferences in North Carolina, and presented on it at 4Cs a few years ago, and have always gotten good response from it, um, and so bringing the story up to now, which is taking the spatial and visual rhetoric class, when I signed up for the course, I knew that I was excited about extending the work that I had done with this project. Um, and I should also say that at, at Elon, where I taught previously, um, I was involved in a visual culture group, um, a group of faculty that were interested in teaching with visuals, and it was interdisciplinary. We all talked about really interesting ways to use visuals in the classroom. And it was more visual than spatial. So um, I brought my multi-genre research materials to that group with, you know, a good response. And so that also helped kind of advance. But anyway, so I signed up for this class knowing that I had interests in teaching with visuals and learning more about that and reading more about it. And um, so I really felt when Amy introduced this project that I was going to cop out if I was redoing the same project that I've presented on and taught a lot. Um, but after talking with Amy about it and reflecting on it, um, I'm really kind of extending work that I've done previously and putting it in a new context um, because I, I'm trying to connect it with the objectives for U of A's writing program. Um, and I'm also um, shifting kind of the way um, I'm trying to offer people more options for the assignment so that they don't have to see it as a big undertaking because it is a really big project. But for instance, even having your students write in one other genre, whereas my project, um, I usually have my students write in like six or eight genres. 
um, all together. So, um, but even having people become aware about genre theory and the benefits of that for raising rhetorical awareness and um, helping students gain a firmer sense of audience. And so, anyway, um, that's kind of. I, I decided that I would continue to kind of extend what I already have. I have good student examples that I think people will enjoy seeing at the at the event. And um, so I'm I'm also challenging myself by incorporating readings from our class, which were things that I hadn't read before, into how I see this project connecting with you know what we're learning. So that's kind of recontextualizing it a little bit too. So that's pretty much where I am right now.